Hello, I am Oliver Mace and I head the research and development at Ecoroll. Today I would like to tell you about process reliable roller burnishing with hydrostatic roller burnishing tools. In roller burnishing, we distinguish between mechanical and hydrostatic roller burnishing tools. With the mechanical tools, we have a roller body that is mechanically supported and pressed into the surface by a mechanical force. With the hydrostatic tools we will be discussing today, it is a bit different. In hydrostatic tools, we have a roller ball that is pressed onto the surface from behind by hydraulic medium. This means that the ball floats in the hydraulic medium and is pressed onto the surface via the hydraulic medium. There are tools with and without a tracking system. Generally speaking, all pieces of equipment and tools have a stroke that the ball can compensate for. This means it doesn't matter so much what the component looks like. The tracking system ensures that this stroke is very large. We can represent several millimeters here. The areas of application for so-called HG tools are diverse. Essentially, when you look at the range of components we can process, there are few component geometries that we cannot reach with a hydrostatic smooth rolling tool. For example, we have grooves or threads that are simply difficult to process because I can't get the ball into the bottom of the thread or groove. But all other geometries can actually be processed. Of course, there are limits, such as when I actually reach a shoulder, I still have a certain distance due to the ball radius. But usually we can access it very well. And roller burnishing is specifically designed for special applications, so we are actually very free in our choice of geometry indeed. The advantage of hydrostatic tools is that I can not only process rotationally symmetrical components, but I can also work on free surfaces. I can perform surface machining, such as milling. Then I can mount the tool on a milling machine, clamp my component there, and then move in a meandering pattern over the surface. I can do the whole thing, 3-axis, 5-axis, however, it usually doesn't matter at all. The disadvantage, of course, is that I am slightly a little bit slower at all because the machine tool cannot achieve the same rolling speeds as those enabled by a rotating process. Hydrostatic roller burnishing is indeed typically used when the hardening of a material is very essential and truly essential. That means if we want to introduce compressive residual stresses, if we want to induce work hardening, basically if we want to increase the lifespan of a component. The HG technology is well suited for this because it operates in a process reliable manner. We have this ball that is pressed into the surface with a rolling pressure of up to 600 bar. Here in the picture, it is also shown how the whole thing could work on a surface. The ball is pressed into the surface with a hydraulic pressure of up to approximately 600 bar. Theoretically, you can also use the coolant pressure of your machine tool. If it is sufficiently high, we do recommend some level of filtration, but basically it is possible, in fact. Usually, however, the machine tools do not typically have the necessary power to reach these 400 or 600 bar. The advantage of the hydrostatic tool is that it is a force control tool. This means that the geometry of your component doesn't really matter. With mechanical tools, the feed is usually enabled by advancing into the component, which is a common practice in many machining processes. This means we have a deflection of a spring, which can affect the precision and accuracy of the machining operation. And if I now have deviations in the component geometry, for example, if I have a smaller diameter than I should, then I naturally have a reduction in spring force, and thus a reduction in rolling force. This does not happen with hydrostatic roller burnishing. The rolling force is always determined by the hydraulic pressure, and thus follows the geometry, so to speak. That means, even if my component is out of round, I always have the same rolling force. And so, for example, we were able to simulate the hardening of a camshaft. Basically, you can obtain tools with various diameter ranges from us. We have tools with ball diameters ranging from 2mm to 25mm. This means they can work on very fine structures, but they can also handle very, very coarse structures and thus be very, very productive because they achieve higher contact areas. Overall, the ball diameter is also responsible for the force acting on the process. This is always a question that customers ask us. How much is the load on my machine tool? This can basically be calculated very easily based on the pressure and the ball diameter. 
Simply put, this is an approximate formula, but very simply you can say, you can calculate the ball cross-sectional area and multiply it by the pressure, and then you have the corresponding rolling force. So, pressure times area equals rolling force. We have a rolling force of approximately 1 kN at 400 bar with an HG tool. With an HG13 tool, which has a 13 mm ball, we have a rolling force of approximately 4 kN at 400 bar. This gives you an idea of the load that will act on your machine tool. To effectively and efficiently utilize the hydrostatic smooth rolling technology, you indeed not only need a tool, but also a high pressure unit. This high pressure unit is part of the technology unit because it needs to generate very high pressure of 400 or even 600 bar to achieve the corresponding consolidation. This hydraulic unit must meet certain requirements because, of course, they do not want to achieve any errors in their process. This means that any jamming of chips or dirt in the ball holder immediately and causes the ball to stop, resulting in a rubbing process instead of a rolling process. For this reason, we offer the advanced EcoForce technology. Our hydraulic units of the HPU type are specifically designed to work with hydrostatic tools and are considered as a unit of the technology, tool, and aggregate, and efficient. When roller burnishing with hydrostatic tools, the main goal is to introduce compressive residual stresses. This is the main goal. These compressive stresses are not visible in any way. I can't measure them at all afterwards. So I simply need a very, very process reliable process in any manner. And for that, hydrostatic tools are highly predestined because they enable force dependent processing, which is highly efficient and precise. If we take a look at the process and see what kind of residual stresses are introduced there, as an example, we have brought the processing of 100 chrome 6 with a hardness of 62 HRC, which is a very, very hard material, extremely typical for bearing processing. Here, due to the previous hard turning, there are naturally changes in the residual stresses. You have a significantly different depth profile of compressive residual stresses due to tool wear. You may even get tensile stresses on the surface, which you definitely, absolutely want to avoid. Through the subsequent roller burnishing process, we are able to completely eliminate this additional residual stress beforehand. This means that when we perform the same process, we introduce the same residual stresses, regardless of the residual stresses that were previously present in the material. We took this same investigation a little further and actually investigated what happens if I roll 20 times, performing the exact same process 20 times. We achieved this by always consistently setting the same process. So, rolling pressure, feed rate, and rotational speed were all precisely controlled and documented. At the same time, we also measured the rolling force using a force measurement platform and monitored it as well. The result was that none of the processes were different. Both in terms of rolling force, surface finish, and residual stresses, everything was within measurement tolerances and we couldn't detect any differences. This means that roller burnishing with hydrostatic tools is incredibly process reliable and is definitely and certainly suitable for introducing compressive residual stresses into your components. I have reached the end of this video. Thank you for your attention, and if you would like to know more about hydrostatic roller burnishing tools, please feel free to contact me or my colleagues at Ecorol AG.